Hi guys, welcome back to Down Under and South of the Border. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're enjoying the channel, don't forget to subscribe, please. I do it for you. So this episode, we're going to start with 2017, the worst year of my life. Huh, it's gonna be quite a fun ride. Let's start the show. It's the beginning of 2017, just February now. Um, I'd been admitted into a psychiatric institution uh, to treat my severe crippling depression. I could not even cry on the bed. I had to climb under it to cry. And I thought I wasn't alive. I thought that um, life wasn't worth living even if it was. I didn't know who I was anymore. Bernardo was talking to me a little bit just support because he probably thought I was fucking crazy, which I was. It was a rough time and I had some terrible, terrible psychiatrists at this institution. They didn't make things much better. But I spent three weeks there and I managed to get out of it. What time was it of the year? Mardi Gras, bitches! And I had so much fun. Finally, like it was actually the first time. Great fun, great sex. Again, my God, I thought I wouldn't have great sex again. I was so worried. I really was, can you imagine me? Around this same time, um, two flatmates had moved out at the same time due to the renovations that were going on. It was left to me to find the, um, the second two flatmates. The long week, oh my God, it was just ridiculous. Uh, it was way too much too soon. I cracked and I ended up back in um, that same institution again for another three weeks and that takes us up to March. I did some cat sitting in March and that was good. I um, got to hang out with some cats and um, do my studies um, to teach English as a foreign language online. That was fantastic. I also got to do my practical during that time. That was amazing. I really learned so much from the TFL Academy. Thank you guys. Uh, big thumbs up. They really, really helped me and they, I really saw how hard it is um, to learn English. Cause I was like, fuck, I gotta learn Spanish quick. Cause this English shit seems hard, man. I was cat sitting and I ended up getting very depressed. But during this time I had a grinder date. And on that grinder date, I was like set up with this um, young guy, hippie kind of looking, da -da 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 -da, been talking, blah, blah, blah. Um, get to his place, it's a nice place, nice building, open door. It's not exactly who I thought it was going to be. Long story short, he had a spare room and I was able to pay for that spare room. And that was cool. Until it wasn't. So I stayed there for a few months, got a job at a certain pharmacy chain here in Australia. It was cool. It was very basic, but it was enough to make money and to not think. I started this channel during around the same time. Things were starting to move, but I was very depressed living there. I kind of moved on from Bernardo. We weren't talking at all at this stage. Um, it just moved on, but just the feelings, the feeling was still there that I was just a piece of shit. And it would take a decent amount of therapy to get through that. I ended up moving to my parents for some weeks until I found a place in King's Cross with a strange crazy dog lady who you know the dog you know the cat lady from the Simpsons essentially her but uh, with dogs in a tiny 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 apartment that wasn't big enough for two people she had two of her own dogs and she minded three others couldn't bear it ended up moving out of there it was all very messy <laughs> literally because the dogs shat everywhere but just, it was just 
unpleasant there. It was not a good environment. During that time I had an interview with a certain bank and I got that job, which is fantastic. Then I moved into another place in Dulwich Hill and it was lovely with a lovely, lovely, lovely Brazilian girl. All of a sudden I had a really nice flatmate, I had nice friends around me, I had a really fucking good job. All of a sudden life was just going madly wonderful. Like better than it had gone for quite a few years really. But then the wheels started kind of coming off. That's the whole thing with post-traumatic stress disorder is that once you've dealt with the pressing issues, the craziness, the, the outside stuff, the violence, the whatever, that's when um, you're free to start processing this shit. And I had no way to process this shit. Um, I wasn't on any medication, I wasn't seeing anyone. Uh, I needed some help and I, I didn't get it until it was way too late. And again, I ended up in a much worst psych ward. Uh, for two weeks, um, I was scheduled. I spent from the middle of December till the 4th of January in that psych ward. So Christmas and New Year's. So, happy 2018 in the psych ward. And I was getting transferred to another private facility, which is well known for its um, inner child work and codependence theories and things like that. But I actually found it quite helpful. I had obviously not been dealing with things very well as a functional adult. I discovered that yeah, my childhood was not as beige as I had of convinced myself that I had actually been through quite a lot of trauma in childhood and in adulthood, obviously, um, with Valdemore. So yeah, it was great in a way. I mean, it, it exposed these, kind of found the reasons for why I was the way I was in a way. And one of the best things that my therapist said to me as I left there was, you're not crazy, you're not wrong. You just had a normal reaction to a very fucked up set of circumstances, which is probably the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. So things are starting to go well again. And we all know what happens when things go well for Jacob. Self-sabotage and my brain goes crazy. Anxiety, the nightmares, the um, and inevitably drinking way too much, like to a level that is toxic for most people. I do things very well, but at least with drinking it's an exterior thing that I can see is like, that's that, that's what makes me crazy. Whereas it's just my mind, I'm fucked. But I'm about to go into a treatment center um, that's going to cure, cover um, the whole mind stuff, the whole alcohol stuff. It could, be, it could be there a while. It's pretty scary shit. Three months, six months, 12 months. I'm obviously going to send, uh, create another message about exactly what's going on, what this facility is like. You can check out the live stream I did today before I went in, which is also today. And uh, so wish me all the best. Um, I wish you the best. Obviously, we're not going to be able to edit this for some time. I love you all. Please subscribe to the channel. It really would mean the world to me. And um, follow me on Instagram at Cobjack. Uh, follow us on Facebook down under at South of the Border. And guys, I love you so fucking much. I love you. Love you to death. Uh, adios, amigos. I'll see you very, very soon. Not soon enough, though. I love you. Bye.